Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And of course, we um, we play old school magic and we open up envelopes and other things that have old school magic in them or related items. And I mean, look at this. I think I know what card is in here and it is, I mean, it's, it's, it's a valuable card, I guess, but I wasn't expecting it to be sent in such a big package. And then uh, we've got some posts from the Netherlands. You can see the clocks, you can see the cheese. Um, talking about Dutch stamps, you can see the tulip, you can see the windmill, you can see the cow. This is kind of a beat up, um, kind of a beat up envelope. You can see here, it says it's been checked uh, with a number and a mis uh, ministry of defense. So this is kind of um, an interesting envelope as well that I will be opening later, not now. Kind of feels like there's, I think it's just cardboard, but it, it feels interesting. Uh, I'm gonna start with this big bad boy. Let's see. Just gonna try to rip it open. Doesn't really seem to be clear, clear and opening. Yeah, this is it. There we go. What's in there? Oh yeah, just a few cards, just a few cards. Wow. You know, that's all there's in there. And uh, I have to say it's well wrapped. I appreciate that. So, um, but why it's in such a big cardboard box, I don't know, because it, it can move around. I personally don't like it if the cards can move around too much, but I guess it's really well protected. Let me just get the scissors. And this, it looks like he just wrapped a whole, <laughs> whole magazine over it. Uh, that's okay. Just gonna check if there are no addresses on here or names. I don't wanna disclose any personal information. Oh, this is kinda nice. It's got the, it's handwritten. Uh, the card market order, which is kind of cool. I don't want to show you because then you know exactly what cards to expect. So it's this piece, this piece of paper right here. So I'm just going to take it off. Um, hmm. This is always a little bit tricky that you're not too impatient that you actually end up damaging the cards because you really want to see what's inside. So I'm sorry I'm doing this off camera, but I don't want to show what cards are in here, what the actual order is. I can tell you there's a really sweet revised card in this order, but it is not a dual land. So maybe that helps a little bit. So there we go, take the cardboard away. And yeah, let's take the order. This is the order card. I'll show you after. It's quite nice. It's like handwritten and everything. Let me just get the play mat a little bit closer. Uh, and here we see, yeah, the actual cards. Wow, this is really kind of difficult to not to spoil anything. Okay, there we go. There is a card in here that has really been going up as of late, and it's a revised one. Wow, there's just so much sellotape. I'm getting a little bit annoyed, to be honest. It's so much tape on here. I just wanna show you guys the cards without spoiling the rest of the order straight away. So sorry for this mediocre mail day video, I guess. Finally, we got them freed, jeez. There's another one. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy with the way he packaged it. It's uh, it's good. You know, the cards seem to be undamaged from transport. That's the most important thing. And I, I send cards too, so I recognize it. Um, so here we go. So this is actually the card that I was waiting for. Let me just get the camera a little bit closer. As you can see, it's really a danged up, dinged up copy artifact. And, I have a little history with copy artifact. Um, I enjoy playing Tron, so therefore I play with a lot of artifacts. So I actually have, I'm lucky enough to have a play set of unlimited copy artifacts. But as you know, I'm also collecting revised. 
and I just, I already had two revised copy artifacts. And so I decided, you know what, let's just buy these two, rip the bandage off quickly. So I just have them and I have them in my collection. Cause I knew, you know, if you're, I almost have everything times four in a revised. And if you don't have copy artifact, that would just be very annoying. So I didn't really care much for the condition. I've got one that's really, really beautiful. So I figured out, you know, number four can be a little bit beat up. So this is number four. <laughs> As you can see, it's quite beat up. I think I paid. I don't know what I what I what I what I actually paid for it. I think thirty euros plus at least. I'm not sure. These these guys went up so much. So the next card is another blue card. It's a six eight. Yeah 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 yeah. This one's fantastic. This one is one of my favorite blue cards. Uh, Island fish Jess Conicus. Of course, originally. It comes out of the Arabian Nights expansion. And this is a rare. So just to give an idea of how good creatures were back in the day, this creature was a six, eight for seven mana. So that by itself is already questionable. And you're probably thinking, but wait, he's got a lot of co uh, cool abilities. Well, actually in those days, if you had a big creature, the creature needed to have a lot of downsides or else they thought the creature was too strong. So this creature has a lot of downsides. Let's take a look at it. So first off, you must pay three blue during your upkeep phase to untap the island fish. And the fish cannot attack unless, unless opponent has islands in play. So this is what we called later island home. Island fish is destroyed immediately if any time you have no islands in play. And you're probably thinking, okay, how often does it happen that you as a blue mage have no islands in play? Well, I can tell you in old school, it happens a lot because there is this card called Tsunami in green and people love playing it and they love playing it against me because I've got a lot of, you know, mono blue decks. Um, and my Timmy Spellbook deck, for example, plays with Pirate Ship that has a similar ability. So when all the islands are gone, Pilot Ship is, uh, Pirate Ship is destroyed. And that goes for the Island Fish as well. Okay, so I've got an Island Fish. What's the next one? Dan Frazier, two and tap. Discard a card you just drew from your library and draw another card to replace it. And no, this is not a uh, Jaloom Tome. You may be thinking about that because that card does exactly the same, but it's a lot better. This card is, look at the casting cost. It's amazing. This card is Jander's Ring. It is six to cast. It's ridiculously expensive. And for that, all you get to do is pay two. So you still got to pay two as well on top of paying the six for the casting cost. To activate it, you got to pay another two. And then you discard a card you just drew from your library and draw another one to replace it. So you can't even choose a card from your from your hand and discard that and then draw another card. No, this card is just, it's just bad because the Jalum Tome, I always call it the little book from the Antiquities expansion. That's just so, so much better. So you're probably wondering, hey, why then is this in Revised if the Jalum Tome was in Antiquities? Well, I agree, they should have reprinted the Jalum Tome in Revised. Instead, they chose to take Jandor's Ring, and this is a card from Arabian Nights. So this is in the same set as Library of Alexandria. Can you imagine that? So the, the, the differences in power level uh, in the old sets is just huge. Jandor's Ring. But I'm happy because it's still needed for my collection. And okay, Julie Barrow. So she's also the, um, the person that illustrated the clone and change the text of a card being played or already in play by replacing one basic land type with another. For example, you can change Swamp Walk to Planeswalk. Oh, this is Thought Lace, the eye, I believe, isn't it? Oh, it's Magical Hack. Okay, okay, I made a little blunder there, Magical Hack. One blue, it's an interrupt. We don't see any interrupts anymore in modern magic, but it's an interrupt. The cool thing about this is you can also change a basic land type with this. So you can do tap for an island into tap for a mountain. Man, there are not many people that know this, but you can use Magical Hack for that. And I love the art. It always reminds me of, you know, when you watch those Studio Ghibli uh, movies, those anime movies, then you always see like a study. And this reminds me of a study in a Ghibli movie. Very beautiful art, very detailed. Let me see if I can zoom in here for you. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, now we kind of get it zoomed in. Beautiful with all, all his work there and 
Just a beautiful, beautiful card. Beautiful, beautiful art. And you can you, you can do some things with it. You can do funny things with it. Let me let me put it here. And then the next couple of cards. Here we go. Titania's song. One green three to cast for an enchantment, originally from the Antiquities expansion. All non-creature artifacts in play lose their usual abilities and become artifact creatures with toughness and power both equal to their casting costs. If Titania leaves play, artifacts return to normal just before the untapped phase of the next turn. Now this last line makes this card so incredibly strong. The, if you cast this when you're playing with this deck, obviously you want your artifacts to turn into creatures or for some reason you want your opponent's artifacts to turn into creatures, but you have a reason for doing so. If your opponent does not counter this effect, they can of course re remove it. They can play a disenchant, for example, or flip a chaos orb on it, but the effect stays until the next untap phase. So for that entire turn, you have what you wanted to accomplish. And I think that makes this card incredibly strong. If, if the artifacts would flip back instantly the moment Titania's song would leave the battlefield, then it's a whole different card. It's a whole different story. But just because the artifacts stay artifact creatures until the next untap phase, for me, that makes this card incredibly good and incredibly useful. And you actually see it quite a lot in old school magic decks. I know that uh, Lady Death Touch um, has a really cool Titania song deck, and there are more players with really nice and impressive song decks. So this is Titania song, and then we're going, moving on to the next one. Art by Douglas Schuler, and ah yes, I still need these volcanic eruption. I think this is also a volcanic eruption. Yes, and oh, we also have an elvish farmer in the back. Okay, let's first look at the volcanic eruptions. I actually now have my play set of volcanic eruptions complete, so that is great. So volcanic eruption three to cast an X for a sorcery. Destroys X mountains of your choice and does one damage to each player and each creature in play for each mountain destroyed. This card sees zero play, but it's so powerful. And maybe maybe I should play it in my sideboard being a blue mage. I'm going to consider it. I'm going to consider it. Um, it reminds me a little bit of Magnetic Mountain as a card that, that it's actually not bad, but it's just never being played. And the same thing goes for Volcanic Eruption. And there's a reason why they're just better cards to put in your sideboard. Obviously, uh, this card is against red. So you might as well just board in uh, Blue Elemental Blast, which is much better and much more efficient than Volcanic Eruption. On the other hand, Volcanic Eruption has the unique ability of destroying multiple cards because of the X and dealing direct damage and damage to creatures which is something that is difficult for Blue. Yes, Blue has Timmy, of course, and yes, Blue has Cyblast, which is an incredible card, uh, and, and a few other cards that can deal damage, but it's not that easy with Blue. It's not like the color red. So it's actually, it's an interesting card. I think, yeah, this, this card's kind of worth maybe experimenting with, and, and look at the combination here, Magical Hack with Volcanic Eruption. We've got a little combo. I wasn't even aware of this, but we got a little combo, Magical Hack, and Volcanic Eruption together. So I can change Mountain into any other land that my opponent may have. Ooh, how cool is that? And I've got two, so I complete up my playset. set. Um, also here is an Elvish Farmer. Look at that art. This is actually one of the more expensive cards in Fallen Empires, and I understand why. Um, and this, of course, art, it must be by Richard Kane Ferguson. Yes, yeah, I, can, I recognize that art anywhere. Um... It is so good because let's take a look at what the card does. One green, one for summon elf. It's an O2, so not a 1-1, one, one, so that kind of helps. It's an O2. During your upkeep, put a spore counter on elvish farmer. Remove three spore counters from the farmer to put a Soprolin token into play. Treat this token as a 1-1 one, one green creature. So, so far, not so special, just like a Thalit, right? But then one mana more. Uh, but the second ability is kind of a lifesaver, literally a lifesaver sacrifices a pro link to gain two life. Now that can make it really difficult for your opponent to uh, to get through, you know, and it's 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 really, really quite nice. So sacrifice a pro link to gain two life. 
I love to kind of use this card in a deck with, um, you also have a Druid in green for Fallen Empires that make makes all your lands two, three creatures, but you have to sacrifice a creature. So, I mean, Elvish Farmer is just great in the strategy with a lot of Thalids and Suprolings and all that stuff. And then you use the Druid to sacrifice one of your meaningless 1-1 one, one Suproling creatures. And then you get to attack for your 2-3 Forest Army. You know, that's always something that I have in mind. And of course, this kind of 2 life gain ability will buy you time to kind of do all your crazy shenanigans. Maybe add some Mazes of If to keep your opponent at bay. Stuff like that, you know. It's, um, it's interesting. It's a cool card. It's a good card. I like it. I'm happy to have it because this is actually number four. So I've got this now complete as well. And my whole collection of Fallen Empires is almost complete. I think I'm only one or two cards away. So it's crazy. So Elvish Farmer. There we go. And we have two more envelopes. Oh, I, I wanted to show you the note. So this is the nice note this gentleman made. So thank you for sending me these cards. And it's really nice, you've got your order number and really nicely you've got like, this is what you ordered. And it, it, I appreciate that. I appreciate people taking their time and, uh, and thank you, thank you for that. So here we go. We're gonna put all the cards here in the corner. Nice little note next to it. And another card. I think this is an envelope. I've been trading a little bit. Um, I love to trade. And I'm actually trying to get a lot of revised cards by trading. So not just by buying them, but just by trading them. The same thing goes for the Fallen Empire collection, which is almost completely traded, by the way. And here we go. Bam. Nothing in there. Always, always checking. Sometimes you miss something. Take this off. yes these are the cards and this was actually a trade and uh, it's quite nice these are two sacrifice and they're in really good condition so let me see if i can get them out they're in really beautiful condition so i'm just going to take them out of the sleeve to show you i mean look at that condition beautiful 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 Kind of the dark art that you expect with those, with the Dan Frazier background that you also see on the Moxon. And it's an interrupt. You don't you don't see it that often in, in, in black, an interrupt. One black, sacrifice one of your creatures to add to your mana pool a number of black mana equal to the creature's casting cost. I Somebody actually killed me with this card. And you're probably thinking, oh, he's going to give me a story about, you know, how he sacked a big creature, got a lot of black mana, uh, uh, cast a huge drain life. That's an option. But no, that didn't happen. My opponent was attacking me with a pump knight, uh, you know, one of the black pump knights, uh, Order of the Ebon Hand. And I, 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 I couldn't block. I had a white deck, so it was, you know, pro-white. Um, so I couldn't block it. And I, I had enough life still, so I was okay. And then he played a sacrifice and just sacked this huge, I think he sacked his Lord of the Pit, actually. He had a Lord of the Pit on the board as well, I believe. It was kind of a weird board state. Sacked the Lord of the Pit, pumped that mana into his pump knight, and killed me. <laughs> I mean, I was like, congratulations. That is that is just such a cool way to die. And let's look at the other one. They're in really, really pristine condition. Look at how beautiful they are. Oh man, I'm so happy to add these two to my collection. That means my sacrifice playset is complete as well. Absolutely fantastic. Really happy with that. And that leaves us with one envelope where, oh yes, the envelope that has been checked by the Ministry of Defense. Defense is defense. So it's this is serious. I think it's just somebody who, who's repacked that, the envelope. That's what I think. But let me see. How can I, how to open this? It is a little dodgy. Let's get this a little bit out of the way. Um, I think I'm just going to cut a little corner here. Yeah, I think that works. Mm, or does it? Feels like I'm cutting through something. 
Oh yeah, this is better, and at least you can see some of the action here. It's not easy to open this. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Sweet, we've got Timmy's multiplying. Okay, look at this. Um, wow. Actually, this is kind of nice tape to, to get off. It's easy. Isn't this called painter's tape? I think so. Whoop. Oh, 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 not damaging the sacrifices. Please don't. They're in such a good condition. Don't want to get any tape marks on them. Like, I don't care when a card is beat up, you know, you know that, but when I see a card in really, really nice condition, then I want to try to keep it that way. Okay. Ooh, you already saw a big card there. I think this is post from uh, Robin. I made a big trade with Robin. And I hope that you also receive my package, uh, Robin. Let me know. And uh, here we see the cards. Let's take a look. We've got a web, which I'm really happy with because I believe I still need two after this. These cards, I mean, they're not worth anything, but like I said, I'm trying to trade as much as I can and they're actually kind of hard to get by. They're easy to buy, I know that. And like I said, they're not worth anything, but I'm looking to trade and as, as a trading card, it's kind of difficult. Not many people have them because it's kind of worthless. You know, web, one green enchant creature. Target creature gains plus O plus two and can now block flying creatures, though it does not gain the flying ability. So it's kind of like, it really reminds me of giant spider. It's like you're giving a creature the giant spider ability. And actually web on giant spider is pretty cool as well because you get like a two six spider that makes even bigger webs than the giant spider, I guess. I don't know. Has a web boost, like a drug for a giant spider. That's a cool idea. Um, Putting it here, it works. Maybe, maybe people have tried it with enchanters, I think. Not been very successful at it. I've been experimenting with enchanters, by the way. But, um, yeah, I haven't been very successful yet with what enchanters deck is best to build. Um, let's take a look. So we've got a Timmy, which is sweet. Hey, another Titania song. Then I believe I'm complete. I think I have my... Whole playset of Titania songs complete. Sweet Helm of Chatsuk. One to cast, one in tap. You may give one creature banding ability. And the art is just, the art alone is worth getting this card. And I know that there are a lot of people that say Revice is faded, you know, and therefore I like 4th edition more or uh, Unlimited more. But if you have an entire deck with revised you will start appreciating that unique coloring trust me it's really nice and another one onulet ah, i'm really happy with onulet i only had one or two onulet so far so i'm really happy so this is my second onulet and yes ivory cup so ivory cup is now absolutely complete so that is fantastic throne of bone I already talked about this in another mail day. Really, really cool card. I believe this one is complete now as well, or I have a double. And, oh, another Throne of Bone. Okay, well then, I, I wonder, do I still need two Throne of Bone? I'll have to check, maybe, maybe. But then I have them complete now, I know that for sure. Okay, another artifact, Damien Willich, Willick, I guess, two, remove one of your attacking creatures from combat. Treat as if the creature never attacked. Oh, this is the gender settleback, right? Oh, it's the other one. It's the ebony horse. So you've got gender settleback, and I guess that untaps a creature, and you've got ebony horse. And I always mix those two up because they're both pictures of horses. Really beautiful. I, I must admit, it's a beautifully drawn horse. It's well done. It's well done. And it kind of does what a maze does, right? So that's why... Actually, it's worse than, than a Maze of If. So I guess Maze of If kind of replaced the Ebony Horse. But you have to understand when the Ebony Horse came out that was in Arabian Nights, it was before the Dark. So it was before Maze of If. 
And Primal Clay. This is such a cool card. I once gave an artist proof to, um, to my brother of Primal Clay. Just such a beautiful card. Is it a good card? Not really. Uh, let me show you what it is. So four to cast for an artifact creature, right? And then you see star, star. I remember when I started playing Magic, whenever I would see a creature with star, star, I would be, I want to play this creature. This is cool. This is versatile. This is fantastic. Um, and then when you start playing with them, you realize, okay, it's not that great. Um, but it's not that bad either. So what happens for four? When you cast Primal Clay, you must choose whether to make a 1-6 wall, a 3-3 three, three creature, or a 2-2 two, two flying creature, Primal Clay then remains in this form until altered by another card or removed from play. So you can choose what you want to make it, right? And you pay that price by basically paying a little bit more for the creature that you get. You know, a 2-2 two, two flyer would usually cost you, I guess, 3 mana, right? Uh, like the Granite Gargoyle, for example, and a 3-3 creature. Well, that's actually usually four, like a Hill Giant, so that's kind of normal. Uh, the 1-6 wall, you would usually, I guess, pay three for that, for those stats, especially since it's a wall. If it was a non-wall creature, then four mana would actually be kind of a good deal for a 1-6. But yeah, it's, um, I just love the art. Let's look at the artist, Kaya Foglio, of course. Just her art is so playful. Really nice. And it's also an Antiquities card. And I know that Kaya and Phil Foglio did a lot of the art for the Antiquities. And that's actually one of the reasons why it is uh, it is one of my favorite sets. Um, let's see. I think these are all Timmy's. Not sure. Because he sent me a message and he said, I'll throw in some Timmy's which I always appreciate. Mm, for some reason, it's a bit difficult to get this tape off. No, it's not open. I'm becoming a specialist in getting tape off of all sorts of surfaces. I'm not sure if that's a great skill to have. Anyway, oh, whoa, 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 look at these. I forgot about these. Okay, so. First, the Timmies. We've got the Timmies. So thank you for the Timmies. Oh, we actually only have one Timmy. And we've got amazing cards behind it. Dark Pact. This is another, this is an, um, uh, a card when you're playing for Anti, right? So Anti was something that uh, people played for at the early days of Magic. So three black to cast for Sorcery. Swap the top card of your library with either the card of the ante. This swap is permanent. Um, oh, with either card of the ante. Okay, so you can choose. You would probably choose to swap your ante card, right? Um, you must have a card in your library to cast this spell. Remove this card from your deck before playing if you're not playing for ante. So, yeah, uh, it doesn't happen a lot that players play for ante, uh, but it is pretty cool. Three black, it's a nice sorcery, but the art, I mean, look, look at the art. Just fantastic art. This was, this this dark pack is also in my, um, my favorite artist top 10 list, which was impossible to make because every artist is unique and it's so subjective and all that stuff. But I tried to make a list and the art for Dark Pack was really high up my list. I just really, really liked the art, the colors, Quentin Hoover, the lines, yeah. yeah. Beautiful, beautiful card. Thank you very much for this. Really, really happy. And then look at these cards. Lord of the Pit. Fantastic, Lord of the Pit. The Lord himself, three black and four to cast for a seven, seven flying trample that you have to feed a creature to during your upkeep or else it does seven damage to you. The nice thing is that you may still attack with the Lord of the Pit. So despite you taking seven damage, you can deal seven damage back to your opponent. And I think this is something that's underestimated. You have a few cards that you have to sacrifice something to. And if you don't do it, it taps itself, right? But in case of Lord of the Pit, you get the seven damage and then you can still attack with it or still block with it. So 
For me, that makes it much better than some of the other cards that have the downside of if you don't pay, it is tapped, right? Um, so we've got Lord of the Pit, we've got another Lord of the Pit, and we have a beautiful Sorcerer's Queen. There we have a nice combo. You can combo Timmy with the Sorcerer's Queen. So Sorcerer's Queen, two black and one, originally from uh, the Arabian Nights expansion. Two, uh, or sorry, just tap, you don't have to pay anything. Make another creature, O2, until end of turn. Treat, treat this exactly as if the numbers in the lower right of the target card were O2. All special characteristics and enchantments on the creature are unaffected. So that means that like counters and stuff, they still add up to the O2. So if you would change a Triskelion into an O2, you would actually turn it into a 3-5 creature because it has three plus one plus one counters on it. So that's the thing to remember. What I always found weird about this card is that it's a 1-1 one -one itself. You would think somebody who makes O2s would be an O2 herself. On, on the other hand, it is the queen. So she is, I guess, she has that one extra power. I would have made her like a 1-2 maybe. That would that would have been, been good stats for her at 1. Or then again, a queen doesn't really have power. That's difficult. Anyway, um, you can combine this with a protocol uh, sorcerer. Uh, you do need two though. And the combo, of course, is pretty obvious. You make his biggest creature into an O2, and you kill it with your two Timmies. Yeah, so these two work, these three work really well together. Okay, well, I'm already on half an hour. I can't believe it. I just wanted to make a short meal day video, and this thing is just getting out of hand. Okay, so trying to free some more Timmies. Okay, okay. Oh, there's different types of sellotape for this one. Okay, I think these are all Timmy's, right? Oh, no. Another Sorcerer's Queen. Sweet, completed a playset. This is really nice. Thank you, Robin. Thank you very much. This is great. And that means I am complete with my Sorcerer's Queens. That is sweet. And then we see a personal incarnation. Three white and three. What I always like is a wizard here in the back of the picture. It's a summon avatar, 6-6. Six, six. Caster can redirect any or all damage done to personal incarnation to self instead. The source of the incarnation goes to the graveyard. Caster loses half of his or her remaining life points, rounding up the loss. So this card is like, you're taking a big risk when you cast this. Because when it dies, play Terror on it, and you lose half your life. So think about this before you play with it. Another personal incarnation. A sacrifice. And we have Eye for an Eye. These are, the art of Eye for an Eye is so incredibly sweet. It's an instant from Arabian Nights for two white. And um, can be cast only when a creature spell or effect does damage to you. Eye for an eye does an equal amount of damage to the controller of that creature, spell, or effect. If some spell or effect reduces the amount of damage you receive, it does not reduce the damage dealt by eye for an eye. And here you can see what this card wants to do. So this card is saying you have to take all the damage, right? But you can use Healing Soft. You can use uh, reverse damage. You can use semi healer. So eye for an eye actually kind of lost its power there because you see that um, cards like guardian angel, cards that are used to, to heal your damage or prevent your damage are not very popular in magic. They're just not strong enough. I still believe that you can build something and I know that people are trying to do that. I'm trying to do that where you use this life gain and preventing damage strategy uh, to your advantage. And Eye for an Eye works really well in those decks. So I think that there is a place for Eye for an Eye in a deck, it's just not there yet. So let me know if you have any ideas or if you already play Eye for an Eye, how you do that. Okay, Whew. this was the entire mill day. Uh, what a mill day it was. Look at how many cards are here stole out um i'm actually forgetting the coolest revised card that i traded with robin this card here we go bam it is fast 
bond and it is a really really pretty looking fast bond it is really really nice one green to cast enchantment beautiful art by mark pool and you may put as many lands into play as you want each turn fast bond does one damage to you for every land beyond the first that you play in a single turn this card can be so broken but it's hard. It's This is really a brewer's card. This is what I call a brewer's card. You see the card, you start thinking about it, you go to bed, you keep thinking about it, you wake up, you keep thinking about it, sometimes you even dream about it, and you just, you end up making a deck, you play it, you lose every match, and after that, you still wanna make it work. This is one of, one, of, one of these cards, and it's probably broken in a lot of different formats, but in old school, it is a nice, card it's a nice card that challenges you to think outside of the box so there are fast bond decks i know um but i always like it when people try to use these cards and, and build something around it let me know if you've ever done something with fast bond love to hear from you curious to build with this card myself as well now that i have three i believe i have three now so i still need one to complete um my play set for revised uh robin Thank you so much for all these cards. Thank you for the huge trade that we did. I actually sent Robin uh, a big pile of, I think, mainly Legends cards. I'll have a little, I have a little picture here where you can see what I traded for this. Um, but, you know, Robin was very helpful. He was like, I want to help you complete your revised collection. Can you show me what you have? And I'll just pick something and, and we'll make it work. So thank you very much for that. I really, really appreciate that. Um, really happy with all these cards. They're going to be great, great, great. Uh, and I would like to thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And yeah, sorry that this mail day took so long. There was just so much mail, so much mail. It's incredible. Um, if you want to support the channel, and I'm sure you want to, leave a like. Oh, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave a thumbs up. Leave a thumbs up. There's my thumb. Um, what you can do as well is you can leave a comment to let me know if there are any cards in here that you've recently built a deck with. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, also, you can become a subscriber if you're not a sub yet. Still about 40% of all the viewers of my videos are not subscribed to my channel. Um, I'm sure you have a good reason for that, but please consider becoming uh, a subscriber because it really, really helps me to grow the channel and also to get my uh, videos under, on, the, uh, on the radar of YouTube. Uh, talking about how you can help the channel, you can also become a patron and then you can become a sponsor of the show. You can join our Discord, you can join our tournaments and events. So you can, uh, there's probably a link popping up right now. You can click on there, that will take you to the Patreon page and you can check out how you can support Timmy Talks. It already starts with a dollar a month. So you can just do a small contribution if you can miss it, of course. Um, so for now, thank you very much for watching. Let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, somba kazee.